You... Hutch took a hesitant step forward, his eyes glazed with unshed tears. I thought you were dead. And he was really torn up about it, too. Thistle deadpanned. For a second, we thought he might throw a party or something. Lila didn't look nearly as happy to see Hutch as he did to see her. I can't believe you found me. Are you stalking me? Are you trying to force me to do the one thing I don't want to do again? I would never force you to do what you don't want to do, Hutch protested. I love you. Well, I don't love you, Lila shot back. I found someone else. I found my true love. Hutch planted his hands on his hips. And who is this rogue? His name is Jericho Steele, and he's twice the man you'll ever be. I should have seen that coming. Jericho? Is he here? He's close, Lila replied. He's waiting for me in there. She gestured toward the cabin. We're going to run away together and start a new life. But you're pregnant with my baby, Hutch challenged. Lila balked. How do you know that? Because I replaced your birth control pills with sugar tablets. Hutch turned aggressive. He was no longer the amiable tool hanging around a therapeutic mud pit with a woman he barely knew. He wasn't even the annoying sniffle monster who followed us to the waterfall while moaning about his probably dead wife. Now he was something else entirely. I knew you were running around on me. I knew you were cheating. I had to stop you. And getting me pregnant when it was the exact opposite of what I wanted was your plan? Lila was beside herself. You're a fiend! Oh, jeez. Thistle pinched the bridge of her nose. I may be a fiend, Hutch shot back, but I'm a fiend who gets what he wants, and I want you. Since when? Thistle's irritation was on full display. You had your tongue down some other woman's throat an hour ago. That is a lie, Hutch roared. I love only my wife. I rolled my eyes. I so don't want to be a part of this conversation. Lila, where is Landon? Lila was confused. Who is Landon? Who is Lila? Hutch asked. I sucked in a breath and regrouped. Queenie, where is Jericho? I told you he's in the cabin, Lila replied. He's waiting for me. I had doubts Landon would ever wait for Lila, but I was eager to be reunited with him, so I moved past Lila and left her to argue to her heart's content with Hutch. Their issues were not my issues. At least I hoped they weren't my issues. Landon? I waited for him to answer, but when nothing happened, I tried again. Landon? Bay? The voice didn't come from the cabin. It came from the woods to our right. I turned in that direction, my eyes going wide, when I saw Landon push his way through the trees. He was shirtless again, but his eyes were wide and his relief, even from a hundred feet away, was palpable. I've been looking everywhere for you, Landon said. Where were you? Looking for you? I tilted my head to the side. What happened to your shirt? Landon gestured toward Lila. That beast happened. Where are Sam and Marcus? Clove asked. They're right behind me. Don't worry. Landon's eyes locked with mine, and his expression softened. I was worried. Even shirtless again, I'm still glad to see you. Yeah, me too. Landon opened his arms. Come here. I took several steps quickly, excited to see him even though we'd been together a mere hour before. It somehow felt longer. I was only halfway to him, doing my best to ignore Lila's outraged screech, when I heard a roar and turned to the right. I don't know what I expected. I knew it wouldn't be an easy reunion. Aunt Tilly wouldn't allow it, after all, and neither would the laws of soap operas. The thing rushing out of the woods in my direction totally flummoxed me, though. Bear! Clove screeched. Holy crap, it's a bear! I could see that for myself, but I had no idea what to do about it. I opened my mouth to scream, but the charging animal, its pelt white rather than black, which didn't make a lot of sense given the mountain setting, turned in my direction, lashing out with a paw and causing me to tilt to the side to avoid being swiped. I hit the ground hard, the air forced from my lungs, and I gasped when the bear turned to face me. Bay! 
Landon panicked, and I knew he wouldn't get to me in time. Even if he did, what could he do? I thought about casting a spell, but I had no idea what kind of spell could fight off a bear. Ultimately, it didn't matter, because another figure hurried out of the trees. I recognized this one after two quick blinks. Aunt Tilly wore a red, white, and blue sequined evening gown. She also had a headband that looked as if it was lifted from the Statue of Liberty's head, and a determined look on her face. Aunt Tilly? She didn't bother looking in my direction, instead stepping in front of the bear and doing the one thing no one expected. She lashed out with her hand and slapped the bear across its snout, causing it to rear back and howl as if it had been hit by a car. Don't even think about it, Aunt Tilly bellowed. I'm Alexis Kane, and I won't stand for any nonsense in my story. Don't you ever forget that. And just like that, Aunt Tilly scared off a bear with a slap. And we discovered a completely new level of insanity. I've given it a lot of thought, and I have a plan for explaining why I was seen hiding outside of Margaret Little's shop, even though I told Terry I was in my greenhouse. I have an evil twin. No, really, think about it. It's perfect. Now I have someone to blame everything on, and no one can prove it's not true because we look exactly the same. It's genius, and I'm sorry I didn't think of it sooner. Aunt Tilly promoting the merits of an evil twin. Thirteen. Bay. Landon didn't pay the bear any heed as he skirted around the creature's massive bulk and ran to my side. He didn't pull me in for a hug as I expected, instead running his hands over my head, back, and shoulders as if he was frantically looking for wounds to bandage. Are you okay? Did you get bit? Do I have to kill Aunt Tilly right here and now? I arched an eyebrow as I looked between him and Aunt Tilly. I'm fine. Well, I'm not fine. He gave in and pulled me close for a hug. I'm freaking far from fine. I absently patted his back and glared at Aunt Tilly. You are in so much trouble. Aunt Tilly was blasé. I have no idea what you're talking about. By the way, I just saved you from a bear. A polar bear, I grumbled, giving the bear, which had seemingly lost interest in attacking, a wide berth as I stood. Landon dusted off my jeans, his hands shaky. I take it you stole the polar bear from Lost? I am Alexis Kane, Aunt Tilly intoned. I don't steal from anything or anyone. I am an original. You're something. I grabbed Landon's hands, which were becoming progressively more obsessive as he worked to clean off my clothing. I'm okay. I can't die in this world. Aunt Tilly wouldn't allow that. I know, but it was a freaking bear. It was definitely a bear. Thistle, her fingers linked with Marcus's trembling digits, approached with a wary look. It seemed I wasn't the only one who had a nice, albeit stressful, reunion with my significant other. And you totally stole that from Lost, you old crone. Aunt Tilly sniffed, disdainful. If you think I'm going to allow you to talk to me in that manner, you have another think coming. Yeah, yeah. Thistle brushed off the warning with a wave of her hand. We're ready to go home. Yeah, you've had your fun, Clove said. Sam pressed to her back as they appeared to our left. Send us home. I have no idea what you're talking about, Aunt Tilly supplied. I've never seen you people before. I narrowed my eyes as I licked my lips. The woman standing before us could be Aunt Tilly. It looked like her. Aunt Tilly was known to appropriate her own image at times, though, so it was equally possible this was simply another clone like the ones we'd seen of other acquaintances and loved ones along our endless journey. Now you listen here. Landon grabbed the front of Aunt Tilly's sequin dress and lifted her a good foot off the ground as he stared into her furious eyes. We want to go home. You've gotten more than enough jollies for one night. Quite frankly, I don't know why you consider this fun, but you've had plenty of it. We've been good sports, he continued. I've been slapped so many times I've lost count. I've lost my shirt so many times I can't even remember what I was wearing when we first landed. Enough is enough. You have to send us home, Clove added, her voice plaintive. We don't want to be here any longer. The look Aunt Tilly shot Clove was straight out of a bad movie. I don't know you. I've never seen you before. I can tell right away you're a total kvetch, though. Alexis Kane does not suffer kvetches. Oh, good grief. Thistle sank to the ground, 
glaring at the bear as it eyed her with what looked to be hunger. Don't even think about it. I'll bite you back. And I have rabies, so it won't end well for you. I pursed my lips to keep from laughing. Aunt Tilly. I've never heard of this Aunt Tilly you speak of. Aunt Tilly's tone was forced and clipped. She sounded like a snotty rich woman on an 80s soap opera. Technically, of course, that's what she was going for, so she managed to do it with a plum. My name is Alexis Kane. Ugh, it's like talking to a wall. This'll flick her eyes to me. We could wrestle her down and poke her with needles or knives if we can find them until she gives in. We could see if our magic works enough to curse her into submission. Or, and I'm just spitballing here, we could take her back to the waterfall and throw her over. That waterfall is lethal, Lila interjected. I only survived because I was determined to get back to my love. She batted her eyelashes at Landon, who quickly looked in the opposite direction. Love kept me alive, Jericho. That love will continue to sustain me. It's still wrong to punch women in a soap opera world, right? Landon looked weary when he pinned me with a gaze. I know she's not real, but... You can't hit my wife. Hutch snapped. She's pregnant with our child. Only because you switched out my birth control pills. Lila's eyes fired. You wanted to keep me from my heart, but it won't work. Lila scrambled to get around Hutch and threw her arms around Landon's neck before he could evade her. Tell him, Jericho. Tell him we're meant to be together. Oh, why is it always me? Landon whined as he tried to extricate himself from Lila's grip. Why isn't this happening to Sam and Marcus too? Because you're the leading man, I answered before I thought better of it. What is that supposed to mean? Landon grabbed Lila's wrists and positioned her so she was in front of him, but couldn't run her fingers through his hair. Under normal circumstances, I would have been offended, infuriated even. Now I was too tired to muster outrage. She means that you're the leading man? Thistle wrinkled her forehead. That suggests she's the leading heroine, and Clove and I are supporting characters. Crap, this wouldn't end well. That's not what I said. But you're thinking it. I am not. You are so. I am not. You are so. I am not. Okay, as much as I would like to wait it out and see how many times you guys can say that to one another, it's not helping. Marcus chided. We won't get through this if you guys start arguing. I stretched my arms over my head. I'm not the one who started the fight. Of course not, Thistle sputtered. You're the leading lady. You're above a fight. I didn't say I was the leading lady. Knock it off. Landon moved away from Aunt Tilly, although the look he shot her over his shoulder threatened potential mayhem if she attempted to flee. I don't see why you're arguing about this. Who cares about the leading lady designation? Thistle, Clove, Lila, and Aunt Tilly shot their hands in the air in unison. I'm the leading lady, Lila said. I'm fulfilling the story right now. I mean, my husband tricked me into getting pregnant. I just fell over a waterfall. And the love of my life is grappling with the fact that I'm carrying another man's child. How am I not the leading lady? Don't refer to him as the love of your life, I snapped. Are you jealous? No, I just don't like it. I'm with Bay. Landon slipped an arm around my shoulders and glared at Lila. I am not the love of your life. Stop saying that. It makes us all uncomfortable. It doesn't make me uncomfortable, Aunt Tilly countered. Because I'm the leading lady. Thistle snorted. You can't be the leading lady. Soaps are ageist. Once you hit 40, you become the matriarch, not the leading lady. I'm the leading lady for the record. We all know it. You aren't the leading lady, Clove argued. You're too mean to be the leading lady. You're the sidekick, the comic relief. You're occasionally used for a plot device or to make someone pay. The leading lady can't be mean. And I suppose you think you're the leading lady, Thistle said dryly. Chloe folded her arms over her chest and lifted her chin. It makes the most sense. How do you figure? Bay is too boring to be the heroine, Clove replied. You're too mean. That leaves me. I'm perfect. I'm cute. I'm a good person. I can cry without thinking about it. I'm obviously the leading lady. Wait a second. I'm too boring to be the leading lady? That's a bunch of hogwash. You're not boring, sweetie. Landon patted my shoulder. You're perfectly fine the way you are. In fact, I think you're the least boring person in the world. I stared at him for a long moment. 
You know you have lipstick on your chin, right? Landon's hand automatically flew to his face. What? Yeah, it just so happens to match Lila's lipstick. That's my lipstick. Lila corrected. That's what I said. My name is Queenie. Heck, I'm so sick of the ridiculous names in this world, I complained. I can't tell you how annoying these names are. Tell me about it, Hutch lamented. You'd think people would have better names. Yeah, Hutch, Thistle said dryly. You're definitely the person who should be complaining about stupid names. Hutch was placid. I thought so, too. Ugh, 